Welcome. This video is about the solar activity that occurred in the month of March of 2019. It was a very active month considering the phase of the solar cycle we are in. It's beginning to make me think that we're further away from solar minimum than I have had thought before, which was about a year or two. So let's take a look at what the sun has been doing over the last month. This is a plot of the official sunspot number from the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium for the month of March. You will note that there are only 14 days here that are spotless. That is an unusually low total for any time during the transition between two solar cycles, which makes me think that we are still in the decay phase of solar cycle 24, rather than at or near solar minimum. This graph is made up of the contributions from four different officially numbered sunspot regions. However, thanks to the efforts of some of you, I found three other regions that didn't go into this record because they were either too small or too short-lived to qualify for an official sunspot number. One such region is shown here with this green arrow. Now, if you see a green arrow, that means it was likely a solar cycle 25 region. If you see a red arrow, it's likely to be a solar cycle 24 region. So let's take a look at each one of these sunspot regions in turn. So let's deal with our first unnumbered spot region. It was in the southeast quadrant of the sun. It appeared on the 4th of March and lasted for about 27 hours. And if you look at the magnetic configuration of the spot region shown here on the bottom right, you can see that negative polarity is leading and that it would indicate that it was a new cycle region, i.e. a cycle 25 region. The first of our numbered regions was active region 2734. It appeared in the northeast quadrant of the sun on the 5th of March and it lasted a grand total of seven days. Here's a picture of that region. You can see there's multiple spots, some of which have penumbra, that's the gray area around the main spot itself. From the magnetic configuration seen in the top right hand corner, you can see that the leading spots were negative polarity, which in the Northern Hemisphere means that that was a solar cycle 24 region. This region produced one C flare. This is the GOES X-ray plot for that time frame. And you can see it produced the C1 flare on the 8th of March at about 300 hours UT. The inset shows the picture of the flare taken at the peak in the SDO AIA 131 channel, which is about three or four million degrees. Now I'm going to show you the development of this region in three different wavelengths. First is going to be from the HMI continuum channel, which shows the development of the sunspots. The next is going to be the equivalent magnetogram. And lastly, I'm going to show you the development of this region in the corona using the AIA 193 channel, which is about a million degrees. You'll notice that the region develops very rapidly initially, but then slowly decays away to nothing as it approaches the western limb of the sun. It's fairly clear from the magnetogram that the region is getting pulled apart by the differential rotation of the sun and the magnetic elements of the region are getting further apart and weaker as a result. Here is the coronal development of the region. The dark images you see flip across the face of the sun is when the moon gets between the spacecraft and the sun. Next, we have another one of those unnumbered spot regions, although this one did count towards the monthly sunspot average. It appeared on the 13th of March and lasted for about 18 hours. Here's a close-up picture of it. You can see it was made up of multiple spots. And from the magnetic configuration in the top right, you can see that negative polarity was leading. So this would be a solar cycle 24 region. Next, we have active region 2735 that appeared in the northeast quadrant of the sun on the 18th of March. And it lasted four days. Here's a picture of that region. You can see there are some fairly large spots there. A couple had penumbras with them. From the magnetic configuration, you can see that it has negative polarity leading in the Northern Hemisphere. That would make it a solar cycle 24 region. 
However, the spots were not strong enough to produce any flares during this period. Once again, I'm going to show you three movies of this region. First, the Continuum movie showing the sunspots, then the Magnetogram movie, and then the Coronal movie. In this case, you can see that the sunspots develop relatively slowly and decay away rather slowly as well. This is different from the other region. In the magnetogram, you can see the slow development and that the magnetic field never got particularly complicated, which is why it probably didn't produce any flares. If you look at the coronal images, you can see that the region is quite dynamic. There's lots of motion going on there, but none of it is extensive enough to produce a flare. Next, we have the star of the show, active region 2736. That appeared in the northwest quadrant of the sun on the 19th of March and lasted at least six days. Here's a picture of the region before it rotated over the western limb of the sun. You can see the sunspots are massive, several times the size of the Earth. And from the magnetic configuration, again, we have negative polarity leading, which would make it a solar cycle 25 region. While the region was still visible on the sun, it produced 11 C flares, including two C4s and a C5. This would make it one of the most flare productive active regions in over a year. So once again, I'm going to show you three movies of this region, the Sunspot movie, the Magnetogram movie, and the Coronal movie. See if you can see the flares in the Coronal movie. Notice how rapidly the region develops. And I have the impression that the leading spot in this region is actually rotating. And that's always a very good sign for the production of flares because it introduces stress into the magnetic field. Equally, in the magnetic data, you can see how complicated the magnetic structure of this region becomes, mixing both positive and negative polarity. Again, a good indicator for flare activity. In the coronal activity, you can see that some of the flares cause shock waves to be propagated across the surface of the sun. Those are often associated with coronal mass ejections. Unless you think this region just died away as it went over the west limb, here is a recent image from the Stereo spacecraft showing the region alive and well on, on the far side of the Sun. And assuming it maintains its integrity, we should see it in the next week. Now the question is, the question is, will there be any spots remaining? Last, and probably least, is our third unnumbered spot region. It appeared in the northwest quadrant near to the other two active regions on the 20th of March and lasted only 10 hours. Here's a picture of that region marked with a circle. You can see it's a tiny spot, uh, but at one point it actually had grown to two spots, so you could classify it as a multiple spot region. From the magnetic polarity of the region, the leading large spot was in fact positive polarity, which in the northern hemisphere would mean it would be a solar cycle 25 region. And right at the very last minute, active region 2737 appeared in the northeast quadrant of the Sun on the 31st of March. So far it has lasted three days. Here's a picture of that region. You can see it has multiple spots and from the magnetic configuration again negative polarity is leading so that would make it a solar cycle 24 region. I will go into this, region's, I will go into this region in more detail next month. Well, the $64,000 question is, are we at solar minimum yet? And I think by comparison of what's happening now with the last solar minimum, we have to conclude we're not. In the background here, we have the sunspot number for March of 2019 in blue. In the foreground, we have the same data for March of 2009. 
as you can see there's no comparison. We're averaging about 10 sunspots per day on the 2019 time frame and we were averaging less than one sunspot per day in 2009. So we have a ways to go yet before we get to solar minimum. As most of these regions that produce these sunspots are solar cycle 24, you have to conclude that we are still in the decay phase of solar cycle 24. When you look at this image of the outer corona taken with the SOHO Lasco coronagraph, you can see that the large scale magnetic field of the sun is very linear near the equator. This is classical configuration for solar minimum. But the question is, how much activity do we get as far as coronal mass ejections are concerned? Because with lots of flares, there was an opportunity for us to get coronal mass ejections. I'm going to show you the same movie four times over. Use the first two repeats to look at four coronal mass ejections off the eastern limb, that's the left-hand side, and the next two to look for them on the western side, the right-hand side. In summary then, we have increased sunspot activity for March compared with that of February. We have some signs that solar cycle 25 is on the way, but those regions are very weak and very small, so it's still a ways away yet. We had 12 sea flares during the month from two different active regions. So until next time, goodbye.